Okay, so in a couple of days time I will be having an LN2 overclocking event with Joe Cart over here in Finland at the Assembly Summer 2023 uh, like LAN event and Computer Expo. Jim's PC still actually invited me to uh, take part at their uh, event booth when I was in Taiwan like two months ago and for this event I actually asked Corsair to send some of their newest Hynix ADI DDR5 memory as they are actually the main sponsor for that event when it comes to memory. So these are some brand new, I think these are Corsair Vengeance memory sticks, four uh, sticks combined. So let's actually uh, test these sticks on this video, like how they perform and what kind of frequencies can we reach with these sticks as we just ran the Acer Predator sticks quite recently on my channel, like how these compare to those and some ideas like how could they actually scale on LN2 as that's obviously the biggest question mark about DDR5 memory overclocking. But anyways, I'll move on to the actual testing. So I will be using the EVGA Z790 Dark Kimpin once again, my very best 1300K CPU with the best IMC I mean, and pretty much the same setup as you have seen before. But yeah, so without further ado, let's get some of these memories onto the motherboard and let's let's get the actual tests going. Okay, let's open up CPU Z just to verify everything, check the model, etc. So the very same 1300K which I used with the Acer Predator memories. So this has the best IMC of my all 13th gen CPUs. And now here on the SPD tab, we can see it's Corsair. 8,000 mega transfers per second, CAS 38. So could this be Vengeance? Because the PCB is not uh, particularly tall. I think this is some kind of Vengeance based kit. But looks interesting uh, uh, nonetheless. Week 30 from 23. So this should be very new kit. So let's hope they perform well. This should be binned to some degree. So. Uh, yeah, let's see what happens. We already have some baselines. What I got with the uh, uh, Predator memories. So, uh, yeah, let's see. So I'll go back to the BIOS and let's see what happens. Okay, I think the voltage thing was uh, tied to the Predator sticks only. So I would assume these sticks should be a bit more common when it comes to like voltage uh, scaling overall so i think we can use like 1.65 straight away 1.6 over here maybe cast 35 for now similar third timings etc 52 no atoms and uh, yeah very baseline stuff over here so so let's try this and let's see what actually happens Now it actually happened again with these sticks, so I tried 1.65 first, like I showed you. Uh, it blue screened upon uh, operating system boot, and now with 1.55 we are in the OS at 8600. So uh, yeah, so, uh, seems pretty interesting that this, this kit has similar like voltage uh, behavior as the Predator sticks. I don't know if it's some particular uh, uh, like IC batch that does this. The bigger question mark will be, do these scale well with LN2? Because I had some very hard time with those Predator sticks on LN2, like getting beyond the level where I was at with the sticks running on ambient cooling. But again, we don't even know if this is uh, stable or not at 8600, etc. But we can still try it. Hopefully my temperatures are all right because I'm using pretty, very like fast and dodgy mount on the CPU. But the CPU is actually down clocked a little bit with easy voltage. So it should be all right, I think. Okay, it's crashing. So I'm mostly interested in the performance specs of these sticks. So I'm not gonna like try the maximum daily stable overclock etc because I don't have time for it at the moment I just want to go through I, I just want to go through these sticks quite briefly see what sticks could be good for LN2 attempt during our uh, uh, overclocking demonstration event with Chocot next weekend at Assembly Summer 2023 here in Finland in Helsinki so uh, we'll see what happens we have both 
the latest Intel as well as the latest AMD platform to test with. So 1300KS, K and 7950X, 7900X CPUs from AMD. The most interesting CPUs for the wide audience from AMD have been the 3D models, but the latest 3D model from AMD, it's actually locked. You cannot overclock it really. So there's no point on running it on LN2. The only thing you could do would be the memory. But as we are doing LN2 overclocking, we will be focusing on the more interesting CPU models from that perspective. But yeah, so uh, I still have two more sticks to test. So I will probably try single stick, see if uh, any of these sticks can run like 1.65 volts on ambient cooling, etc. Like what would be the normal behavior or are all of these sticks the same as the Predator sticks? So they only like, re like relatively low values, etc. So I'll move on to uh, the single stick testing for now and once I find the best two I will pair them and I'll try what kind of figures will be the max on ambient cooling because this CPU has already been tested at close to 8800 on ambient cooling so uh, it, this shouldn't be CPU limited anyways. Okay so this is a past run at DDR5 8700 with CAS34 with this Corsair DDR5 memory sticks. So I actually found two pretty okay sticks from the four sticks I was given by Corsair. As I went through all of them, I didn't only test like how well could each single stick do on its own, I also looked for voltage tolerance because I believe if the stick can, if the stick can tolerate higher VDD voltage, it could be a bit better for LN2 and it actually scales. So these sticks actually scaled from 1.55 to 1.65 on the VDD. The VDD Q, however, doesn't like uh, higher values that much compared to 1.55. When I tested these sticks, like single stick, I managed to pass uh, 8600 with 1.65 on the VDD Q as well. But now when I'm running dual, it doesn't really want to do it. Actually, hold on. So, so. I think this is pretty all right already. We aren't that far behind the uh, uh, Acer Predator sticks. They were definitely a bit better on ambient based cooling, but so far I had a pretty hard time getting them very high on LN2. So there's definitely some uh, temperature scaling issue with those. I need to see what's going on with them. So it's obviously a very big question mark. How well could these actual sticks do on LN2, but the score is definitely all right. 16,436, 8,700, 34, 47, 42, 36, common rate 2. And I'll show you the sub timings as well. So pretty much the same. I used, I actually used the Acer Predator profile for this run. So 595 TRFC, max on the refresh interval. The third timings are pretty tight as well. So here are the voltages, 1.65 VDD, 1.55 VDD Q. The sticks usually, or at least the two of the sticks, they actually worked better with only 1.5, 1.55 both on the VDD and the VDD Q. This combination can actually run high VDD, but not that high VDD Q, but that's pretty much it. So uh, when it comes to HEI MEM test, I, I, I think the uh, maximum with similar like daily capable voltage is somewhere between 8266 uh, and 8400. It might not be able to run 8400, but it might be close. So it's already a very good result from Corsair, if you ask me. So we can still try a bit higher, but I don't really have uh, much expectations uh, beyond this frequency level. So uh, 8750 was the max we got with the uh, Predator Hermes sticks and now this is 8730. I don't actually do I don't actually remember what was step okay so eight eight seven four nine so I think this is pretty much it so eight seven fifty this was the max we hit with the predator sticks but this might actually fail when we try to run this 
now in Geekbench 3 as well with the Corsair sticks. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this will be the max. So this is uh, 8720, cast 34. So this is definitely the max. I can pass 8700 a few times, but this really required quite a lot of attempts. It's still a pretty good result, only 30 mega transfers per second behind the Acer Predator sticks, so I'm pretty happy. So it's definitely good enough to be tested on LN2 and for our event. So let's save this, but this is pretty much it. And uh, yeah, I could do like daily stable uh, attempt later, but uh, again, I'm already pretty sure it will be relatively close to the level where I got with it. So pretty happy. It's very awesome to see some good sticks from Corsair as well. And these still shouldn't be the very new, was it called Dominator Titanium or something like that. What they already showcased during Computex, so maybe that stuff could be even a bit better. These are the main settings. To confirm the voltage for you guys, it's still the same 1.65 VDD, 1.55 VDDQ. I actually tested even higher VDD, like 1.7, but it actually went worse. So uh, that's pretty much the end of the voltage scaling. So here are the sub timings. Still pretty much the same, no differences whatsoever compared to the previous run. But yeah, definitely no more, so I will not be attempting any higher uh, with this kit right now. So this is definitely the max, and we'll see what happens when we go on LN2 with Chokehart in a few days' time. So uh, that's pretty much it. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like to see these uh, very interesting DDR5 Hynix ADI memory sticks from Corsair. This is still a 32 GB kit, so I'm not using the 24 GB module. I think those aren't as good for overclocking compared to the 16 GB modules, so I'm still more interested in this stuff compared to the 24 GB module. But yeah, this is pretty much the end. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I will see you on the next one.